Don't freak out. I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of cleaning tools. But in this video, we are going to talk about essential cleaning tools and how in each category to pick the right one for your home so that you don't have to feel overwhelmed and you actually have the right stuff to get the job done. Let's start off with the wild world of brushes because I'm sure you've seen tons of them and I want to talk through which ones are which, what they're for, what you need, what you don't need. This one you need, this is a toilet bowl brush. Now this is our prop toilet bowl brush, don't worry. It's not the one we actually use or else it wouldn't be on my kitchen counter. These are important to have because you wanna make sure that you can get your toilet scrubbed clean. Now, of course, there are a variety of different ones that are available. I actually have my preferred products linked for you down below. It'll take you to an Amazon list and some other links not available on Amazon. But basically the reason I like this one is because it's got really durable nylon bristles, which are safe to use on a vitreous surface like a toilet. Vitreous, by the way, means like a porous toilet, bathroom, sink type surface, just so you know. Because these bristles can be scrubby without scratching, it means that they're gonna be able to lift off that dirt, that buildup that you see in the toilet on a regular basis. Now, sometimes you'll see them that, you know, they have like an extra bristle kind of pointing up, kind of like a finger pointing up. Those are really good because they'll allow you to get under the rim. Uh, and if you notice that the area under your toilet rim gets particularly dirty, that could be a good addition on the tool for you. Otherwise, uh, you know, this shape is just fine. And the reason I think this one is cool is because it's kind of open air, open air for your toilet bowl brush. Um, so it kind of goes back into this little bowl. And then what's cool is you can kind of flip it around and no one needs to see the TBB toilet bowl brush. This over here, this wackadoodle looking brush cleans a couple things in the house and it's about appliance maintenance. This can clean the coils at the back of your refrigerator, removing dust as well as your dryer um, lint trap. And the reason why this is important is because it allows your appliances to flow. This long mascara wand can kind of dip in and swing around and pick up any dust or buildup that could be preventing airflow from those two appliances. If you notice that your fridge is loud, it's probably because the coils are dusty. So you would pull it out and you would use this or a vacuum with brush attachment to get rid of that dust. If you notice that your dryer has a lot of buildup in the lint trap uh, and every time you pull it out, there's like remaining dust in the little slot, that's when you would wanna get this brush and give it a good cleaning. It takes, I don't know, 10 little pumps of the brush and then you vacuum up the debris and you'll notice that your dryer actually works much more efficiently. This is a brush I've labeled with painter's tape. It says for water bottle, no toilet. And uh, this is a hydro flask brush, but it doesn't really matter what brand you have. I like this because it gets into all of our water bottles and our drinking cups that we don't put into the dishwasher. So I use this very regularly. I just leave it on the edge of the sink to drip dry, much like what you would do with your toilet bowl brush. And then it lives under our sink uh, and not in the bathroom. This is a mini version of what you would call or what I would call an iron handle scrub brush, not because it's made out of iron, but because it looks like an iron. And the reason these are good is because they have typically very firm bristles. And as we've now learned, the firmness and material of the bristle will tell you where you should be using these. So the firmer the bristle, the more durable the surface. I would use a brush like this if let's say I had a stain on a concrete floor in my garage and I needed to scrub that area. This would be a really good tool for that. This is also really good for cleaning large areas of grout. So you want to use an iron handle scrub brush wherever there's a lot of scrubbing involved. You really need some good friction. You really need to dig in there. Um, this just allows you leverage and it's comfortable. You can get them in different shapes and sizes, but this is something that when I started in the cleaning business, I thought you were supposed to use this when you like clean to the bathroom and clean tubs. And actually this is much more of a specialty tool that I would pull out less often. Unlike the dish and sink brush, something like this you would keep in your kitchen at the sink to get into the nooks and crannies of any dishes or serving pieces or pots and pans that you wanted to scrub clean. Now, this is really a tomato tomato situation. You can choose 
um, a soap dispensing dish wand with a sponge head. You can choose a sponge. There are lots of different options for what you want to use to clean your pots and pans. A lot of folks like these. And again, I want to talk about the bristles because the bristles make a big difference. If you have, let's say a cast iron frying pan, you're not supposed to use soap and water when you clean that, but you need to lift off say egg or some buildup from steak that you were frying on there. Well, how do you get that off? If you're using a sponge, you might have to work really hard. Whereas if you're using a brush like this that has some pretty durable bristles, you can actually get more leverage and get more cleaning power. The other cool thing with dish and sink brushes is they come with a flat edge like this. A lot of folks don't know this, but this can be used as a bit of a scraper. So you can quickly scrape up any of that built up debris. Some people really like using this as well if they don't want to ruin their nails or if they have sensitive skin, eczema, any or eczema, depending on how you pronounce it, or you know some sort of affliction that uh, makes them not want to get their hand wet. And by no means am I saying that having your nails done or eczema are afflictions, but I think you, you kind of pick up what I'm putting down there. And then we've got here the humble cleaning toothbrush. Now this can be used in a multitude of ways. What I would recommend is for any of these brushes or cleaning tools that you're using, make sure that you demarcate your bathroom tools from your kitchen tools, from your general cleaning tools. This doesn't have to be anything more fancy than something you pick up at a dollar store or even the old one that you are no longer able to use because the bristles are too burned out. You can use this to do little teeny tiny cleaning jobs like cleaning your rings or your watch straps, cleaning the little areas around your sink where you get that hard water buildup. And if you're using it in the bathroom, you can use it to clean areas under the toilet hinges. My gosh, there are so many fun uses for a cleaning toothbrush. The opportunities are endless. Microfiber cloths are one of the biggest innovations in the cleaning space in a very long time. They've completely changed the way that people can clean. And just a brief bit of history, if you don't know, I started a cleaning business here in my hometown of Toronto back in 2006. And when I started that, I was using terrible cleaning cloths. Then I started to talk to janitorial supply companies and I asked for their very best products. That's when they got me into microfiber and I noticed what a difference cleaning with microfiber made. And then in 2011, we started making YouTube videos like Clean My Space. And then in 2015, 2016, we actually came out with our own line of microfiber cleaning tools, which is what you're looking at right here called Makers Clean. And that's because we would talk about microfiber here on the YouTube channel and no one could find it because it was only available at these professional janitorial supply companies. So that's what Makers Clean is. It's a company that brings like premium quality, professional grade microfiber to everyday consumers. First is what we call our OG, our original microfiber cloth. It's a terry weave style. And this is what you're going to see kind of when you see microfiber. This is like the general cloth that you're gonna see. So if you look at it up close, it's kind of got a towel looking weave to it. Um, and what's neat about these is they're absorbent. So these can hold up to eight times their weight in water, meaning that when you clean a surface like this, they don't leave any streaks behind. And the terry also allows it to pick up dirt, dust, debris, and even microscopic things that you can't see like germs. That's what's so cool about microfiber. You can clean using soap and water or just water, but these are great to have kicking around for your everyday dusting and everyday cleaning. If you wanna get more granular with your uses for microfiber, uh, this is one that uh, we use. This is probably my second or third most used cloth at home. This is what we call our flat weave or a glass and electronics cloth. And that's because without the terry weave, it can't pick up any dirt or debris, meaning it won't leave any micro scratches when you're cleaning your stainless steel, your television, your glasses, your computer screen. So these are really great to have. And they're also awesome for cleaning windows and mirrors. They are perfect at cleaning up grease and fingerprints and marks, but they don't leave any streaks behind. And of course they don't scratch. We know how wonderful it is to have like a plush cloth that can absorb water or liquid uh, and also, you know, be able to polish. And that's why we came out with this. This is the duo cloth. And what this does is it's almost double the weight of this cloth. So it is super thirsty. For example, if you happen to spill 
uh, a big bottle of pop on the floor or someone spills juice. Like we don't grab for paper towels. We just grab for one of these, chuck it down and it just picks up the entire spill and then you wring it out on the sink. Now folks also love to use this to clean their cars, their motor vehicles, their recreational vehicles, what have you. So these are awesome cloths for not only polishing, but also for cleaning up big spills and messes. This type of cloth, this is a dish towel or a tea towel as we like to call it here in Canada. Um, and what's awesome about this is it's got a waffle weave and we made ours extra large because generally when you're cleaning pots, pans and dishes by hand, you're not just cleaning one or two and then you want room to actually get your hands dry as well. So that's why we made ours extra large. I always found those tea towels were so small, like you could maybe get one pot and a fork on there and that was it. Um, what's also cool about these is that they they have this waffle weave, this pocket, so that they dry quickly, but at the same time, they're absorbent. So that's why they are called waffle weave, and people use these for all kinds of things. Um, my gosh, the emails that we get from people when they tell us about the uses for their waffle weaves are endless. When you think about cleaning the... F a definite must in your cleaning arsenal is a glove. Now, disposable gloves make a lot of sense if you have like a really grimy one-off job or if you're cleaning like a moldy area and you never want to use those gloves again. The thing you're going to be giving up with these, of course, besides the ability to reuse them, is the durability. So either you might have to double them up or replace them mid-cleaning task. But there is a time and a place for these, so that's why we have them. Now, uh, more importantly, what I use on a regular basis is a really good quality thick pair of rubber gloves. And I look for ones that are sort of rolled up at the top. That's because they are easier to put on and they also help to sort of shield any water from coming right up and going into the gloves. So um, these ones are great quality. We've had them for a long time. And when I look for rubber gloves, I look for ones that have good texture, so that way if I'm holding something, they don't slip out of my hands. Now, you might wanna get gloves in different colors, or if you have gloves that are all the same color, say they're all black, you can get like one of those cool, shimmery Sharpie markers and just label them uh, with what glove is for what area so that you're avoiding cross-contamination. Now, once you're done using your gloves, whether it's for the kitchen or the bathroom, the best thing to do is to give them a cleaning. I just use a little bit of soap and water and wash my gloved hands. Once that's done, I peel the gloves off, fingers out, and I just let them air dry. Once they're dry, I put them away for storage. There are a lot of different ways that you can scrub something clean at home. So let's just talk through the variety of scrubbing tools that you can get your paws on. First, we've got your basic double-sided sponges. Now, Everything here is Scotch-Brite brand. To me, they are the best quality, so those are the ones that I love and recommend. This is the non-scratch scrubber, uh, double-sided, so you have the soft sponge and then the scrubby side. This is the heavy duty, the yellow on green. But these for me have fallen out of favor because I actually find the cellulose side to be pretty gross, so I don't like using these sponges anymore. I prefer, if necessary, using one of their scrub pads. So you've got the non-scratching and you've got the heavy duty. What I would use the heavy duty pad for would be like a really dirty pot or pan if I was cleaning an oven or a barbecue, any kind of heavy duty cleaning job where I'm not so worried about scratching the surface. Alternatively, if I am worried about scratching the surface but I need abrasion, we've got this thicker webbing here and it's a non-scratch finish. So I would use this if I was cleaning a tub, a tile, a tub or a tile, just one tile, that's it. Or any surface that was grimy and had buildup, but I wanted to avoid scratching. So um, that's really the, the difference between the green and the blue, the heavy duty versus the non-scratch. But again, keep in mind, these are not uh, washable, machine washable, and they are indeed a disposable product. To solve that problem, that's why we at Makers Clean came out with our scrub squares because you get the wiping kind of what you would love about the spongy side on one side and then you get the non-scratch scrub side on the other. These are also machine washable, which all of these are not. These are great for kitchen or bathroom and kind of your everyday scrubbing. When you're done with them, you can chuck them in the washing machine. Typically with these, 
Once they look worn out or they get smelly, you gotta chuck them in the garbage. Then there is the classic eraser sponge, whether you wanna get the branded magic eraser or otherwise. Now, people love this for a variety of reasons, most importantly, because it cleans well, but you always run the risk of, is it safe to use on a particular surface? So there are the diehards for this particular product, and I'm not here to argue with you. If you love it, you'll love it. Just make sure that you follow package instructions and you always test in a hidden area first. The other thing to remember when you're using an eraser style sponge is to rinse the area clean afterward because you wanna make sure that there's no residue left behind. This sponge, that's basically what it does. It just sheds residue and that's part of how it lifts grime off. It, it almost deposits like a little bit of a, an abrasive onto the surface and then you can use water to kind of wipe it away. So it is effective, just kind of comes with some caveats. Then you've got steel wool, which is essentially a spun metal version of shredded wheat. And it's great, it's a sleeper product. It's really great at cleaning a variety of different surfaces. In fact, people have even used them to clean their glass shower panels, to clean certain parts of their stove top when it's been really challenging. The most important thing is to use the super fine version of steel wool. You always wanna use it when the surface is wet, otherwise you can scratch it, and you wanna protect your hands because it's metal and it can poke you. The other type of scrubbing tool that you might wanna consider is sponge on a stick or a dish wand. These are useful if you love the idea of being able to hand wash dishes using a sponge, but you don't actually wanna get your hands wet. My only pet peeve with these is that you constantly have to be buying replacement heads for the sponges, which is why I kind of favor a dish and sink brush over one of these, but you do you. Hey, before we move on, if you wanna save 10% on all Makers Clean products, you can use the code YouTube10 when you check out. If you're a DIY cleaning products fan, then obviously having a multitude of spray bottles is a great investment for you. But here is the thing, it is a Goldilocks situation. It is not easy to find a good spray bottle and that's why I have so many and I test so many. So I don't even have the cheapy ones from the dollar store cause they just bust after a few uses, whether it's the nozzle going or the plastic indenting, they are just crappy. At big box home stores, you can find these heavy duty sprayers, which are fine. Uh, the only thing you might want to keep in mind is that sometimes it's a little too intense to spray. It's like you're, you're using your whole hand just to clean your counter. So especially for folks with mobility issues, sometimes this can be a little overwhelming. Also, the bottle itself is quite big and tall, not the easiest thing to store. Then I want to talk about glass spray bottles. This one comes in a very lovely package. It's probably close to $40, but it's reusable and it's a dark colored glass. But here's the thing. When I use this, it is heavy and it is not comfortable to clean with. From a durability standpoint, sure, it's glass. It looks pretty, very apothecary-esque. It's also got this rubber bottom, which is nice because if you drop it, it's not going to crack but there is always the risk that you run of knocking it into something where it could crack and shatter. To be honest, I love the idea of glass, but I don't love the idea with cleaning with a glass spray bottle. It's impractical. And that brings us to aluminum spray bottles. Cause you might think, hey, aluminum spray bottles must solve all the problems. But here's the thing with that. You drop an aluminum spray bottle, especially on the bottom, boom, it deforms and it will never sit straight again. So it's always a little bit risky. Personally, I like aluminum spray bottles, but they are not perfect. You also can't gauge how much product you have in there. Sure, you can do the old shake, but really you can't see color. It's, it's, it's really hard to sort of figure out what's going on inside an aluminum spray bottle. So I like them, but they're not perfect. Then we've got our reusable uh, product spray bottle. So this one is from a bottle of cleaning vinegar. We've refilled it several times. What ends up happening with this is the nozzle starts to wear off after time. Remember, while these are really good quality bottles and we wanna try to extend the life of them as much as we can, uh, over time the nozzles, the sprayers are gonna start to go. So if you are going this route, just use a good quality one. Make sure that you rinse it really well between uses so that if you're changing up the product inside, uh, you're not mixing anything that it shouldn't be mixed with and that you're also clearly labeling the bottle. When we refill this one, we just refill it with cleaning vinegar, so it's fine. 
But what I do have here and that I wanna show you are high quality plastic spray bottles. So the reason we end up loving these is because they are clear, they have measuring lines on them, so they're easy to make cleaning recipes with. They have a good quality trigger head, so you're not gonna deal with the leaking that you would deal with with some of the less expensive stuff. And these are designed to be used multiple times, whereas again, like if you're dealing with a lower quality uh, sprayer or something that's designed for a one and done use, you're always kind of rolling the dice. These ones come in a couple of different sizes. This one's cool because it actually kind of is designed to fit right inside a caddy and it's very small. Um, so these are the ones that we kind of favor. They will actually be coming onto the Makers Clean website soon. So if you are interested, you can sign up for our newsletter to get notified when these are available. But yeah, we've spent a long time looking for the perfect spray bottle. And as you can see, it's really hard to find one that is 100% and checks all the boxes. I think squeegees are one of the most underrated cleaning tools with the coolest name. And there are two kinds that you're gonna see. There's the regular rubber tip squeegee and the double-sided squeegee. So let's talk about this one first. The rubber tip squeegee is great for cleaning your showers after each use, whether it's a glass shower panel or tiles, even the floor or the tub. This is what's gonna prevent soap scum and hard water stains from building up so that you never have to do a hardcore heavy duty clean of your bathing area again. Very inexpensive and incredible investment of not only the few dollars you have to spend, but the very few seconds you have to spend after each shower. This is also great if you have pets, I'm pointing to my cat, she's off camera, and uh, upholstery or a blanket or even a carpet where there's a lot of pet hair, you simply can wet the tip of this rubber edge you can do short strokes and you will see all that hair come up because the rubber creates a bit of friction with the fabric and then the hair comes up, it's pretty cool. Now, when it comes to double-sided squeegees, these have an entirely different purpose and this is what professional window washers use. You probably knew that. And the reason I love these is because they make the job very quick and efficient. You've got two sides. The short side, you've got a microfiber pad here. What's great is these are removable and machine washable. So once you're done, you can clean them off easily uh, and pop them back on. And then on either side, you have a replaceable rubber blade. So you would set up a bucket, you would fill it with hot water, a squirt of dish soap, some vinegar, mix up the stew, and then you're gonna dip in your squeegee. You're gonna get it nice and sloppy on the window, just like this with the kind of microfiber side, then you're gonna flip it over and you're just gonna go straight back to forth, left to right, to get rid of all of that liquid. It's gonna to fall to the bottom. You can lie a towel right down there and this just makes the job so much easier. Now, the other thing that's really cool about these is that they have universal threads on the bottom. So you can pop these onto extendable poles. That way you don't have to risk your life and go on a ladder You know that's 30 feet high to clean your second story windows. These are a great investment. You're only gonna have to buy them once. They will last you for years and they make interior and exterior window cleaning a breeze. These are two of probably the most unexciting items in my house, but they have a ton of use. The first is a cleaning bucket. And I gotta say, I've had this one for years um, and that's what's kind of good about them. They're heavy duty plastic, they're durable and they get the job done. I use this because we don't have a basin in our laundry room. Um, so I will use this sometimes if I have to soak something for laundry. And the great thing is they're very easy to clean out between uses. So if I'm doing a laundry thing and then I want to mop floors, it's just a matter of rinsing and drying. Um, having a bucket is imperative and depending on the type of mop that you have, you might want to get some sort of uh, attachment for it so that you can wring out the head. But of course, when using our mop, we just take the pads and wring them out by hand. The next thing that's really important to have is a cleaning caddy, especially if you plan on carrying your products around the house and you're looking for a great storage solution. Again, made of heavy duty plastic, caddies come in all sorts of configurations and shapes and styles and colors and you name it. Um, but what's great about these and what's something I don't think a lot of people think about is that when you're using a cleaning product or tool and it's wet on the bottom, let's say you place it down on a surface, 
If that product is not safe to rest on that surface, you can cause a stain. So a cleaning caddy is not only a convenient way to port your stuff around, but it's also a little bit of insurance. So when you're bringing your stuff around, you always have a home base to rest your products back in so that you don't have to worry about cross-contamination or potentially damaging a surface. And as we do in cleaning, we work our way from the top to the bottom, and that's why we are at floor care now. There are three major considerations for floor care, and of course, you need to consider the type of floors that you have before you pick up any floor care tool. If you have soft floor surfaces, you're going to be most interested in getting a good quality vacuum that has a powerful beater bar. That's the brush head with the roller on the inside that can spin around when it's attached to a power source and lift out any dirt or debris or hair that's stuck in a carpet, as well as, of course, small particles. Now, if you have hard floors, you'll have some different considerations to keep in mind. Not only do you want to lift up that dirt and debris, but you also have to think about any dust that settled on the floor and you have to have maneuverability so you can get into corners and sort of those tighter spaces because the debris and the hair and the dust bunnies have much more flexibility in terms of where they can roam. So when it comes to hard floor surfaces, you want to think about having a vacuum with a hard floor attachment as well as or instead a broom. Now I would say that I'd always err on the side of having a vacuum because you're just going to get a better quality clean and with a vacuum everything gets sucked up into the canister whereas with a broom really you're kicking things up and you're only getting the largest particles in the dustpan but the small stuff just recirculates goes back into the air and then settles on surfaces that you've already cleaned. Now vacuums are also important because they come with smaller attachments that can be used to clean upholstery stairs vehicles, corners, uh, you know, light fixtures, all the little, little kind of awkward things in your home where you kind of think power cleaning would be useful. Having a vacuum with uh, attachment tools can be very, very helpful. So that's why I would say, you know, thinking about a vacuum that has flexibility is key. Now for floors, hard floor surfaces, you're going to want to think about a mop. We have this mop. This is our taco shaped mop, the maker's mop. It is won awards. It is definitely one of the most popular products on our website. People are crazy about it. And that's because having a good quality microfiber head mop gets the job done using the least amount of moisture. What's cool about this mop is it's got two different kinds of pads that we sell it with. It's got the heavy duty pad for big spills and dirty, dirty, dirty surfaces. And then it's got kind of an everyday pad that you can use on, you know, floors that are relatively clean. It's also got an extendable pole so that if you're super tall like my husband, you can extend it so it's comfortable for you. Or if you're a foot shorter like I am, you can extend it down so that it's ergonomically useful for you. And of course you can use that um, for getting up high and down low as well for different cleaning tasks. Um, the pads are machine washable. And of course the taco shape allows you to get into all sorts of corners and nooks and crannies. And it tackles a lot of additional cleaning jobs um, that you might not necessarily think a mop can do. You know, interestingly, I've spent a lot of time doing research on cleaning tools and there have been a lot of innovations in the broom world lately. I know brooms aren't exciting, but uh, you should see how these things can fly these days. Jokes, cleaning joke. Okay, so first of all, um, yes, there's the regular triangle angled broom and that I would say is kind of a tried, tested and true model, but there's a lot of cooler stuff that's out these days. You know, these thinner brooms, they can get into more nooks and crannies. I also love a dustpan that has teeth on it because it can sort of clean the bristles while you're doing your dustpan. Um, and also creative storage capabilities for the dustpan really uh, are quite useful. And these are good just for those super quick cleanups or if you have um, you know, a space where you don't necessarily want to bring your vacuum, especially if you have a big clunky vacuum or a central vac, it might make sense to bring a broom there instead. You can also pick up outdoor brooms, usually the corn brooms or those straw brooms. Um, those are really good for outdoors or even large push brooms that you can use to clean kind of those indoor outdoor spaces like garages or patios. Now this is a little handheld broom. It's kind of like a cute little fun accessory, but actually it can be quite useful um, if you have to get into a little awkward corner or if you're just doing a quick cleanup of your kitchen chairs, you know, if there were some crumbs, you know, and you didn't want to go and grab your big broom, this is just a little guy you can keep handy. 
Um, and it's just nice and easy to tuck away under your counter. Also makes you feel like you're at a fancy restaurant, you know, and then clean off the table with the crumbs afterwards. Just kind of a cute little extra to have, but that's just it. It's an extra to have. Anyway, when it comes to floor care and crumb and dust care, this is the variety of tools you should be looking at and considering. And if you were excited by any of the beautiful Makers Clean products that I was talking about in this video, you can go over to makersclean.com and use coupon code YouTube10 to save 10% when you check out. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. That's where we do all of our product drops, our exclusive sale to our newsletter members, as well as share extra cleaning tips and information. Thanks so much.